You are listening to KSG India podcast. This is a short, crisp, concise, exam-oriented, edited editorial for civil services aspirants. In this podcast, we are going to talk about India's nuclear arsenal. Source is Harsh V Pant's article for the Mint. Recently, India conducted two major missile tests. The first was the Shorya hypersonic weapon test, which was conducted in October 2021. The second was the Agni P missile test conducted on Christmas Eve. Both missile tests indicate that India is on course to fielding a more sophisticated nuclear arsenal with greater diversity of delivery systems. These developments have triggered a flurry of analysis ranging from satisfaction over improvements in the Indian arsenal's level of readiness to dangerous prognostications about what these missile developments might mean for strategic stability especially between India and Pakistan. Let us begin with what Shorya and Agni P imply for the state of readiness of India's arsenal. These two missiles highlight the importance of expanding the repertoire of our nuclear capable missile forces. India also tested a hypersonic weapon that is estimated to travel at a speed of Mach 5 and designed to dodge missile defenses. Hypersonic weapons such as Shorya are likely to be highly effective in taking out enemy early radars, static military installations such as air bases and command and control that is CNC facilities. facilities although shorya may require a few additional tests to establish the credibility of its operational capabilities the agni p missile is believed to be capable of delivering multiple independent reentry vehicles or multiple warheads against a single target this creates an opportunity for india to strengthen nuclear deterrence through ambiguity several analysts have inferred that agni p and shorya together represent a shift in india's no first use policy however officially there is no evidence to suggest a change india's declaratory doctrine has remained steadfastly committed to no first as to use even as the country's operational posture in the form of higher readiness levels undergoes a shift the latter part is increasingly manifesting itself in the form of the canisterization of india's missiles not only for longer range missiles such as intermediate range ballistic missiles that is rbms but also for the agni p which is a short range ballistic missile that is srbm A canistering missile enables more rapid deployment as warheads could already be mated with missiles and placed in climate controlled tubes preventing damage for launch on short notice further canisterized missile capabilities give india counter force strike options especially against pakistan according to some analysts who fear an intensification of strategic instability emerging from india's missile progress thus because of india's putative mirv based and canisterized ballistic missile forces one school of thought holds that india could launch a preemptive strike against pakistan's nuclear facilities in the heat of a crisis this view conveniently overlooks the fact that pakistan has a larger nuclear arsenal than india's and rawal pindi's refusal to adopt a no first use policy despite past entreaties to do so Pakistan also pursues an asymmetric escalation posture that involves the development and deployment of tactical nuclear weapons but most critically early use of atomic weapons in a conflict with India leaving us exposed to standoff missile attacks moreover it is misleading to argue that India's canisterized and MIRV capabilities so strategic instability when it is more the result of Pakistan's pursuit of an offensive posture that involves the tactical use of nuclear weapons against a potential in in conventional attack indeed the pakistani presumption that the tactical and strategic use of atomic weapons can be kept separate is the primary source of instability new delhi has generally rejected the notion that decoupling the tactical and strategic use of atomic weapons is possible or sustainable because there can be no real distinction between counter value and counter force strikes involving such weapons at least against pakistan Also India's pursuit of higher readiness levels in the form of Agni P and Shorya is only par for the course in that it is a justifiable insurance against a risk prone adversary such as Pakistan. Although India has stated no first use policy combining it with a higher degree of operational readiness of its nuclear tipped missile forces is also about pursuing nuclear deterrence though through ambiguity as it sows uncertainty and induces caution in India's two nuclear adversaries China 
and Pakistan. If anything, it complicates the first strike options of Beijing and Rawalpindi. Beyond Pakistan, the advances in India's missile capabilities are geared to deterring the People's Republic of China. The latter has significantly superior capabilities than India. Beijing has deployed its Dongfeng 26 IRBMs in the Xinjiang region of western China. India's Shorya hypersonic weapon is equally a response to China's TF-17 hypersonic light vehicle, that is HGV, with a range of 1,800 to 2,500 kilometers, which Beijing is believed to have been fielding since at least 2019. Notwithstanding the caveat that uh, New Delhi has generally rejected distinctions between counter-value and counter-force targets and tactical and strategic capabilities, Indian counter-force strike options are more plausible against China than Pakistan simply because a large number of the former's land-based nuclear forces are more distant from population centers. Pakistan is acutely vulnerable to strategic interdiction due to its narrow geography as opposed to the geographic and strategic depth China enjoys. In any case, Beijing's submarine-based nuclear capabilities gave it a near-invulnerable second strike capacity, making India's counterforce strikes against Chinese nuclear targets difficult. Thus, India's hypersonic and canisterized Agni SRBM and IRBM capabilities are equally about preserving strategic deterrence and enhancing regional strategic stability. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. To join KSG in the courses and to crack the ICE exam, visit ksgindia.com. You can also get a PDF of this podcast on ksgindia.com.